In this video, we'll be learning how to draw the structure or the foundation of the human head. The structure of the human head is much more important than the features on the human head. Building the foundation for the head is much like building the foundation of a house. You can install a lot of fancy features in a house, but if the foundation is weak, the house will eventually fall down. And the same is true with your drawing. If the foundation of your drawing is strong, then the drawing will always remain strong and will stand the test of time. The human head comes in a wide variety of shapes, so getting the basic shape of the human head is critical. That's why we want to develop a standard for laying out and drawing the head. Then we can simply adjust the standard, make the nose longer, or make the chin longer, or make the eyes wider, etc. Now this drawing I just did is based on the technique developed by Andrew Loomis. Andrew Loomis was an American illustrator and his drawings were widely used in advertising between 1920 and 1950. He studied at the Art Students League in New York under George Bridgman and Frank Dumont, two of the most important art teachers in American history. And even though he died in 1959, he still has a profound influence on artists today. This technique of drawing the head that he developed is still very popular today because it works. So now let's analyze the human head. The round part or the ball of the human head is called the cranium and basically it forms a box to enclose the brain. Now the other part of the skull that we artists mostly see and are concerned about is called the mandible. That's what we know as the jawbone. And of course there are many more bones in the skull but these are the two major bones that we as artists see and draw. Now, when we look at the front of the skull, it's no longer round. Now what we see is a circle with two sides cut off. I'll illustrate this by taking an orange and cutting off the two sides, and this is the basic shape of the cranium. Obviously, this doesn't include the jawbone, but this is the basic shape of the cranium. It's a ball with two equal parts cut off the sides. Now when you look at it from the side, you can see that we have a circle that's about two-thirds the size of the cranium. So when we apply this to the human head, we see this circle and then we put another circle which is two-thirds the size of the original circle. And so this inner circle becomes very important for the layout of our drawing. Notice how this inner circle corresponds with the skeleton. The circle is located just inside the zygomatic bone which protects the eye. Now here's what I mean by drawing a circle two-thirds the size of the large circle. This green line represents the middle of the circle. So if I divide the top half of this circle into three equal parts, this would be one, this would be two, another equal part, and then this is another equal part. So I've divided this top part of the circle into three parts. So this distance is two-thirds of the circle. So now let's see how this inner circle relates to the head and why it's so important for us in our drawing. This green line represents the middle of the circle, which is the middle of the ball, which is the middle of the cranium. You'll notice that the middle of the ball is in line with the brow line. Now the bottom of this ball is in line with the bottom of the nose, right here. You'll also notice that it's in line with the bottom of the ear on a typical person. The brow line is also in line with the top of the ear on the average person. Now the top of the ball represents the hairline on the average person. Now this distance and this distance are equal. So what we do now is take another equal distance. So this bottom line is in line with the bottom of the chin. So these become equal distances between the bottom of the chin, the bottom of the nose, the brow line and the hairline. And you can see how this inner circle is important for us. Now we'll take away the skin and see how the lines relate to the skull. You can see the brow line, the hairline, the bottom of the nose, and the bottom of the chin. And on the average person, these distances are about the same. When we look at the front of the skeleton, we have the same thing going on. The brow line is the middle of the ball, we have the line under the nose, the line under the chin, and on top we have the hairline. So now you can see how this relates to the face with muscles and skin on it. The alignment is the same. The middle of the ball represents the brow line. The bottom of the ball represents the 
bottom of the nose. Then we take another equal measurement for the bottom of the chin. And then the top of the ball represents the hairline. These measurements are roughly the same on the average person. And also notice that the ears are in line with the brow line and the bottom of the nose. So now let's draw. So we create our circle first, then we divide the circle in half both ways, horizontally and vertically. Now I'll divide the top half of the ball and the bottom half of the ball into two thirds each. Now since we're doing a frontal view, we're cutting off one third off of each side of the ball. So I'm marking that now. And remember it's in line with the hairline and the bottom of the nose line. So these are the two pieces that will come off of the ball. I like to put this cheek line in and you can see that it is a V-shape or a pinch and you can see that this pinch is located between the brow line and the bottom of the nose line. Now I'll measure for the bottom of my chin line. Remember the bottom of the chin is the same distance as the distance between the brow line and the bottom of the nose line and also the same distance as between the brow line and the hairline. Now when I mark the bottom of my chin I usually put this rectangle at the bottom of the chin. Then I draw this flowing line that goes from the top part of the rectangle to the cheekbone and ties into the pinch that I drew at the cheekbone. Now I draw the bottom of the jawbone up to the bottom of the ear. This is the average location that the jawbone will connect to the head, right in front of the ear. And clean up these lines a little. You can see here that I make my original lines light and then when I'm ready to finish the drawing, then I'll make the lines darker. You can see I'm cutting off the ball on each side of the head, finishing up the drawing for an average shape of the average man's head. Right there is our cross point, right between the eyes at the top of the nose and right in line with the brow line. I think it's a good idea to go ahead and start adding ears to the skull because this will give you practice in placing the ears. Remember the top of the ear is in line with the brow line. The bottom of the ear is in line with the bottom of the nose. And remember this is a drawing of the average person. Every skull is different. So you'll find that people will have longer jaw bones, they'll have eyes that are wider apart, they'll have a round head or they'll have an elongated head. But that's why we start with the shape of the head first. We don't put any features on it yet because the shape of the head really dictates how the features will lie on the face and define the character of the person that you're drawing. Now let's draw the side view. First we make our circle. This is the ball, this is the cranium of the head. I don't make my marks very dark at first. You'll notice this time I'm using a Conte pencil. When I did the front view I used a Conte crayon. They're both the same product from Conte in Paris. One is called a crayon, one is called a pencil, but they're the same product. The pencil is just encased in wood. Now I divide my circle horizontally and vertically. Now I'll mark my center. This is where the two lines cross. This is the center of the ball, center of the cranium. Now I make my inner circle. Remember it's two-thirds the size of the outer circle. Draw very lightly at first. Get yourself established first before you make your lines darker. Of course this inner circle I'm not going to make it dark at all. It's just a guide. Now that I have my inner circle I can extend the bottom of the ball and the top of the ball to my outer edge because that's where my hairline is going to be and that's where the bottom of the nose line is going to be. Remember the middle line is the brow line. Now I'll measure for the chin. The chin is the same distance as the distance between the brow line and the bottom of the nose line and also the brow line and the hairline. These are all roughly the same distance. Now I usually mark my brow line. The bone usually protrudes right here at the brow line. At the back of the jaw line the cranium connects between the inner circle and the outer circle. The cranium is not a perfect circle usually. Now I'll draw my jawbone. When you practice drawing your skull, you'll get used to where this jawbone connects to the cranium. It's usually somewhere around the bottom of the ear. Depends on the person. Now we have an inward curve for the eye socket. The center of the cheekbone is usually in line with the inner circle. You can see where I'm drawing this line down to the chin and that line usually cuts right across the cheekbone. Now I'll darken my lines a bit. So you can see here that we've basically drawn the skull 
And this is the foundation of the person that you're trying to draw. But you have to get this part right because the features won't look right unless the foundation of the skull is accurate. So let's review. Remember I divided the top half of the cranium and the bottom half of the cranium into three equal parts. Then I made my inner circle two-thirds the size of the outer circle. Then I extended my lines out to the hairline, to the brow line, to the bottom of the nose, and the bottom of the chin. Those measurements are usually about the same. Now I can start practicing on some of the features. We'll cover all the features in future videos, but right now, this is what you should be practicing, getting the foundation of the skull correct. Remember, the top of the ear is in line with the brow, the bottom of the ear is in line with the bottom of the nose. In our next video, we'll start drawing the face from different angles. But you can never practice this too much because you need to learn where this inner circle lies in the cranium.